Okay, a quick update on the Z80 homebrew project. As you can see, the board has been transformed somewhat since the last video. There are more wires. A new chip's been added. The original Z80 circuit has moved from here down to here. And finally the LEDs have moved from here up to here. So let's start looking at the reasoning behind these changes. This additional wiring around the Z80 provides links to this area of the motherboard. Um, this lays out the address and data lines logically from A15 down to A0 and the data lines from D7 to D0. This makes it easier to wire up the memory chips and any additional peripheral chips, video and sound. As the address lines are now exposed here in this block of the breadboard, it means it's highly likely that the remaining components are going to be placed up here. So the Z80 and 555 timer circuitry have moved down to the bottom to maximise use of space on the breadboard. The second part of the board now has a ROM chip on it and it'll be soon joined by a RAM chip which will go here. It's a Windbond W27C512 electrically erasable PROM and it's a 64K byte part 64K times 8 bit. It's fairly easy to wire into the circuit. It has got 16 address lines wired up in orange here and 8 data lines in grey. And these are wired directly into the Z80 address and data lines on my bus here. It is also connected to ground and there's 5 volt here behind this nest of wires for power. And there are two more pins connected. The yellow wire chip select is connected to this pin on the ROM chip and into the Z80 here the memory request pin. This is active low so when low this chip is selected i.e. it's made visible on the Z80 data and address bus. The red wire here is the output enable. This is connected to the Z80 read pin here and is also active low. When this is pulled low by the Z80 data is read from the address selected on the address lines and the ROM chip puts the value on the data lines for the Z80 to access. When I add the RAM chip in here I'll need extra circuitry for the chip select so the chip select will go into some additional logic which will then split the chip select signal into two and select the ROM and or the RAM depending upon the state of the address lines. I think I'll probably split this 32k ROM and 32k RAM to start off with so I will probably base that on address line 15. So if address line 15 is low I'm addressing the first 32k of uh, memory so I'll select the ROM if A15 is high, I'm selecting the top 32k of memory, so I will select the RAM. The LEDs have been moved up the board to make space for this logic here. As you can see, the LEDs are still counting in binary. This is because the EEPROM has been filled with zeros. 
uh, that's the NOP instruction NZ80 and the LEDs are tied to the address lines so they're still displaying the address that the Z80 is looking to as before. However I should be able to load a program into the ROM and see it run. So the next step is to populate this area of the board of a RAM chip, add the chip to that logic, upload a program to here and see whether we can get something running and output it on the LEDs. As ever, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.